Hello, my fellow primates, and welcome to another video. Today, we are working on the Mazda Speed, particularly the mysterious bog issue. If you know what I'm talking about, it's a pain in the butt. Probably already changed your plugs. I've changed the fuel pump. I've chased down a few things that could be the problem, but rumor has it, that it is the turbo solenoid that is the problem, which is not a real hard thing to change or clean or service. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. So basically what happens with the Miata Bog is that the turbo doesn't kick in or spool the way that you think it should. So for example, when you're in first or second gear and you go into a pole, once you get up into the higher RPMs, about 3,000, 3,500 RPM, you expect the turbo to start spool up and kick in. Um, and sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't come in until later. Sometimes it comes in at 4500, sometimes it comes in at 5500, sometimes it doesn't come in at all. Sometimes it'll throw a check engine light, you'll have this, uh, a random misfire, um, I've had that. And the codes can be cleared by re you know, turning the car off, turning it back on, or, or disconnecting the battery. And sometimes it works fine, sometimes it doesn't. It's really hard to chase down. Um, it could be an ECU thing, it could be bad plugs, you know, it could be could be not getting good injection, it could be dirty injectors, it could be a whole host of things. But the Mazda Speed, the turbos have a common ailment, and that is the boost solenoid. And it basically measures how much air pressure is in the intake manifold. This is my understanding. I'm not at, uh, this is my first turbo car, so I'm still kind of learning the internet, but it is fun. Anyway, the solenoid gets sticky with time, super common on these Mazda Speeds. Um, and what ends up happening is it'll either kick in late, it doesn't kick in at all in my case. Mine has been getting progressively worse. So we're going to try and service it first and I'm going to take you guys through that process and then if that doesn't work, we will replace it. Let's do a 0 to 100 pull and we'll see what the time is. Basically no turbo, almost no turbo, and 100. There it is. Okay. So, uh, didn't throw any codes or any lights, but as you can tell, the car basically didn't hit boost. After this, or when this car is working properly, when you hit that 3500, the tack just, just goes, it launches right up until you do that next shift and drop it down. So, um, the car feels incredibly slow. It, it takes a lot of the fun out of it. And realistically, you bought a Mazda Speed Turbo for the turbo and it's essentially not working. So we gotta fix this. All right, to the shop. This right here is a turbo solenoid. So you don't actually have to take this bracket off to get to it, but I think just removing these two 10 millimeter bolts and not dropping them down in your engine bay is the fastest way to like easily access this spot. Okay. So you can see right here, it's just a clip. Uh, nope, not. Screwdriver time. Why? Why? There it goes. Okay. Electrical clip out. Then this unclips from here. And we have two hoses. So you have a side hose. Come on, hose. So just gonna take those off here. Oh, these have never been off. Obviously. <laughs> Which is okay. Good to have a, a virgin car, I suppose. No mod. Okay, so that is the side hose. Oh, that one came off from the bottom. And then put that one back on right there. Right there, bottom of that bracket. That would be a pain in the butt to get to if you were uh, if you didn't have this bracket off. So I recommend taking those 10 mil bolts off to make your life easier. Now we got the solenoid out. So if you're replacing it, take this off, put the new one in, you're done. Um, we're gonna service this one. We're gonna try and clean it out with some silicone spray and see if we can get it firing. First thing we're gonna do, I've got a 12 volt power supply here that has alligator clips on it um, that I use to charge my kid's rideable toy. Um, we're gonna plug that in. We're gonna touch the connectors and see if we can just get it to fire on its own and see if it's working at all. All right, put one lead on here. And we touch the other one. Okay. You can hear that. It is making noise and it is firing. We're trying to fire. So that's a good sign. That means that the part's not like completely dead. 
Don't know what that does, but we took it off. <laughs> Burp. This is the stuff we want. <laughs> and en français, silicone lube. You're gonna need the little nozzle. We also have some electrical cleaner spray, which we might shoot it with too. But for now, stick this nozzle in here. See if we can get drainage happening. All right. Fill her up. And why not get some in here too? Oh, we've got some spraying out that nozzle when we put it in there. I'm not entirely <laughs> sure where it's going, but ain't in there. And give this thing a super weight down. And while that thing is full, I'm gonna try and blow some compressed air in there. And I'm also gonna try and get these alligator clips on here a bunch more times and see if we can get it firing with the silicone spray in it. Oh. That's getting a nice solid sound. Seems like it's working out okay. Without seeing in there, it's hard to tell. My electrical plugs are not looking super hot either. So I'm just gonna give a little bit of electrical cleaner spray in there. And I'm actually gonna reach down in there with a little bit of sandpaper. Sandpaper around a screwdriver, just to like, some of the corrosion off of there that builds up over time. Just in case that's a factor. Okay. And while we're at it, since we got the air compressor already turned on. Sounds like it's moving it. Which is a good sign. I'm gonna put a little more silicone spray in there. I don't wanna leave it on the car with silicone spray in it. Well, there it is. I'm gonna declare that serviced. It's a Mitsubishi part. Well, there you go, Mazda. Put a Mitsubishi part in one, and of course it's gonna fail. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. So reassembly is just reverse. Put this back right on there like it was. Plug our electrical clip back in. We got our bottom hose right here. And we'll move our, oh, you can do these with your hands pretty easy. They're not the hardest clips in the world. And we'll put this side one back on. Well, we'll see. This may not solve the problem, but we did successfully service. Put these two bolts back in. That solenoid. And we've confirmed it's firing. So we'll see if that's the problem. Let's go take her for a test run. Well, this is one of those make it or break it. Let's give it a try from first gear. Let's go. Oh. A little bit of wheel spin. Boost, oh, I felt some boost. Oh, I got a bit more. Well, we're at 100. It's building boost. It's definitely coming up. It's coming in boost, like some. It's not like as, as bad as it was before, but I still feel like it's not performing like it should. It's sort of, it just doesn't have as much power as I remember it. I don't know, is this like a summer thing? I haven't driven the car all winter now. Let's see, from zero, go. 5,500, 4,500, 5,500. Yeah, I don't know. It's not coming into boost like I want it to. I feel like it should be hitting it faster than that. It's, uh, it's not like it's not working. I mean, when I took the car out for the first test run to do the benchmark, it almost felt like it didn't, it wasn't turbocharged at all. Like it just didn't come in. Whereas now 
the boost is coming on and I can feel it and the car surges forward. Um, and if we look at those times, like it, it might be faster. I mean, it's possible that that helped a little bit. Um, yeah, 6,000, 5,000, 5,000. It's, I haven't got any engine lights. It hasn't thrown any engine lights, but I'm not really sure that this is what I would call adequate performance levels. Hmm. Well, that is how you change the boost solenoid in this car, or I should say how you service the boost solenoid in this car. I think I'm gonna replace the boost solenoid. I'm gonna order one. It's about a hundred bucks, 130 bucks to replace it. Um, I'm gonna order one, I'll swap it out. I'll see if it makes a difference. I kinda don't think it will. I'm not 100% convinced that's the particular problem with my car. Um, I mean, I've read a lot of the forums, the bog issue is real, the boost solenoid is definitely like a thing. My boost solenoid seems to be, my car's turbo leg doesn't, it seems to be a little better than it was. So maybe like this has not Group. I'm gonna try and just roll on to it and see. It's hard to say whether this was the actual problem and we haven't fully fixed it, but we were in the right area, or whether there's something else and mine is working fine. I mean, you guys saw on the bench test, it was firing, it was clicking on and off. It's definitely working to some degree. Is there a vacuum leak somewhere else in this car? Probably. Um, I guess I can check the vacuum lines next. If you are a mechanic and know what you're doing, unlike me, uh, I'm learning, I'm learning. Give this another 10 years, guys. This, this will be the YouTube channel to watch. Expert at everything. Um, yeah, comment below if you think you know what's going on with my car and what I should try and fix next. Um, I'm gonna check for vacuum lines and I think I'm gonna order a new solenoid just to change it or at least have a spare if it does go bad because I'm not 100% convinced that that silicone servicing it was fixing it. I may wait a day or two before I do order it. Um, one, it's COVID-19 so it ain't coming here anytime soon. And two, you know, if it is really just a sticking thing, letting the silicone sit and work for a little while and even just driving the car sort of regularly because again, this car, basically sat in storage all winter and I haven't been driving it that much now. I'm, you know, a lot of us are not going anywhere. I am lucky enough that I can work from home. So that's been great. I get to keep working. Um, but yeah, I'm not going anywhere and the car is definitely not seeing much use. So I'm going to try and use it, uh, a little more often and over the next couple of days and I'll keep my eye on it and I will check back in and uh, we'll see how that goes. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button or share this with someone else in the Mazda Speed forums if you're part of a Mazda Speed group. I'd like to do more and more videos about the Mazda Speed. I don't have to sell this car anymore. Um, financially, things are not quite as tight as they were when I got it, so I can keep it and I'm kind of looking forward to that. It's my dream Miata, I've always wanted one. So I'm planning on doing lots more vids. Let me know if there's anything you guys wanna see specifically around this car or anything we should do. Um, I don't really have a whole lot of thoughts. I haven't really, really seriously put time and effort into like what this car should be or how long it should be. Or, or not how long, like how, how much effort to put into it. We'll see. Again, what do you guys think? What have you done to your cars? I assume that the people who are gonna be watching these Mazda Speed videos are owners. The 5,000 of us, 6,000 of us worldwide, Mazda Speed owners who uh, we just love our cars. So anyway, that's a lot of talking for me. I'll probably cut out some of that because it's kind of boring. But if you stay to the end, good for you. Thanks for watching the video. Thank you so much for the support. And if you want to support us more, we got a Patreon account. Link to that somewhere uh, in the description. There's a link in the description. And also, get some of this merch. It's awesome. And uh, Octane Monkey stickers for your car. They add five horsepower. I've got two on this car, so that's an extra 10 right there. Cheapest horsepower gains you can get for sure. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. I will see you in the next one.
Another quick question. Is that much hydrocholine shaking normal, or is that problematic? Do you know you can get Octane Monkey gear at OctaneMonkey.com? That's right, we got shirts, hats, stickers, even car parts. If you like this video, hit that like button. And if you want to see more, hit that subscribe button.